Hello and welcome to this video on how you can make water and oil mix. This is something that should not happen according to conventional wisdom. It is an almost universally accepted truth that oil and water do not mix. That is, if you just use oil and water alone. There are things that you can add that solve this problem. For example, vinegar or alcohol can act as a sort of bridge between water and oil. That is because they act as an ampiphilic compound. Vinegar and alcohol have some rather obvious drawbacks. Strong smells, harsh on biological material, and so on. Lecithin is a way around this. Lecithin is not just one compound. Just like alcohol, it is an umbrella term that refers to a group of chemicals. What they have in common is that all are yellow-brown and lipid-like amphiphilic substances. They are all derived from plants or animals. The amphiphilic part of this is important. It means it has both a hydrophobic and hydrophilic part to it. This is what lets it act as an emulsifying agent. It lets it act in all sorts of other ways as well. For the most part, it is this role as an emulsifying agent for which lecithin is used. If you are going to make beauty products, food, drinks and more, these can be very powerful as a tool. It reduces oil splitting from foods like peanut butter. It makes food and drink have a better consistency. It makes it possible to use less aggressive and harsh ingredients in beauty products. It ensures that you don't have any unexpected lumps or solids within something that should not have them. Lecithin was first isolated in 1845 by a French chemist and pharmacist named Theodore Gobley. He named the compound in 1850 phosphopatidylcholine lecithine. It was named as it was originally isolated from egg yolks. It can, however, be extracted from any number of other things. You can also use a wide number of solvents, things like hexane, ethanol, acetone, petroleum, benzenes, and so on. If you don't have the means of chemically extracting it, you can do so mechanically. This is a very important feature of it. It can be sourced from plants and animals with either very advanced chemical means or relatively simple mechanical means. Some of the most common sources are things like egg yolks, but also marine foods like kelp, soybeans, cottonseed, and sunflower oil. As a result of this, it can be produced just about anywhere on the planet from readily available material. The downside is that it has low solubility in water, but that doesn't mean it can't be mixed with water somehow to make it work. That's where its role as an emulsifier comes in. When you combine water and some sort of lipid, it can start to do a lot of things. In terms of common biological activity, you can think of phospholipids. These are your phosphate heads with two lipid tails coming off of it that make up part of every cell membrane in your body. They create small pockets in the case of storing things that aren't miscible with water, or they can be used to try and keep your cells intact. On the other side of that equation, it can also be used as a surfactant that is used to break these same structures open. It's all a matter of how you apply it and in what context it's being used. Where we've already described its role in structures and breaking them, it can also be used in cooking. For example, it helps a lot with bread elasticity. This means that if you want a nice bread dough and you're worried about the gluten content of your bread, lecithin is a viable alternative to try and give that bread not only more rise, but a much better break, where you can see that the strands or strand-like structures of the bread pull apart rather than being crumbly. In order for it to be used in the most effective manner, lecithin can also be de-oiled, and this is particularly important with some of those sources we mentioned. Things like sunflower seed oil, 
cottonseed oil, and soybeans. All of these are going to produce a fair amount of oil along with lecithin. By de-oiling it, you can not only make it work more effectively in water, but you can also use it for dry things. Think of dry seasoning sources and soup mixes that come in a packet and are shelf stable. It's often used in this role to replace other lipids that would alter the texture and mouthfeel of food. We've mentioned how lecithin covers a broad number of compounds. Some of these are glycerophospholipids, and that is the major area which needs to be focused on. Under that heading again, we then have phosphatidylcholine. This is a particularly important lipid in terms of the human body. Lecithin being a very rich source of this particular compound means that you can then get choline, and choline is then used within the brain and nervous system as part of messaging. It's considered an essential nutrient, and it does have other roles. Since we can't make enough in our own bodies, we must source it in the diet. This is the similar sort of thing to omega fatty acids. Because of that, the use of lecithin is not uncommon, and it can be used primarily as a supplement, let's say. But in lieu of that, it also means that its efficacy and safety has been tested. Several different countries and international organizations, such as the European Food Safety Agency, the Food and Drug Administration, Department of Agriculture, and so on, have all noted that choline has an important role in the human body, and its derivation from lecithin is not a bad thing. It has a big role to play in lipid metabolism, liver function, brain function, and brain development. This is one of the big reasons why it is often used as a supplement for its choline content. In terms of what it does for beauty products, it's a slightly different role, and that's because it does two things, something that many producers of this sort of thing want, as it means fewer ingredients, and in this case a very cheap ingredient, can be used as a filler and make them more money. The first thing it does is its role as a penetration enhancer. That is, it helps things be absorbed through the skin. By doing so, it can more effectively get things like moisturizer into the deeper layers of skin and give the appearance of improved skin condition. The second is an emollient, and this is both a softening and soothing function. The higher oil content of lecithin for beauty products means that it seals the skin and it keeps moisture in. From these two factors, you can see how it would be considered a very desirable ingredient for creams and other skin products for older people in particular. It also interestingly finds a role in hair care products, and this is largely due to the emollient properties. The emulsification element is where it gets some of the particular use out of its amphiphilic properties. Because it's able to both hold on to water and oil, you can use it in something like shampoo, and it won't begin to separate out, and it's why you can use shampoo and have it in a bottle and stable for a very long time. The ingredients in the shampoo should separate out, they should break up into the individual oil droplets and similar and you should begin to see layers generated in the bottle over time, given how long it can be between creation of shampoo and its use in a shower after sitting on shelves in warehouses and so on for a very long time, you would see this without lecithin. By having it there, it stabilizes the product and ensures everything mixes together and is evenly distributed and doesn't separate out. Yet another reason why it is a very common beauty product ingredient. Lecithin is an example of how you can make two very incompatible things compatible by using an intermediary. This uses the elements of chemistry relating to polarity and charges to join 
two opposing forces. It's just like a moderate in politics. It bridges two very different and often opposing positions. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.